Hello, and welcome to The Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host, Eileen, and on this week's program, our guests from the UF Center for Movement Disorders and Neurorestoration discuss a new clinical trial offering hope for patients diagnosed with early Alzheimer's. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for our program. A groundbreaking clinical trial is underway at the University of Florida to hopefully slow the progression of memory loss in selected Alzheimer's patients. To tell us more, I'm pleased to introduce my guest, Dr. Kelly Foote, Associate Professor of Neurosurgery at the University of Florida and co-director of the Center for Movement Disorders and Neurorestoration, and Stacy Merritt, Assistant Director of Clinical Trials. And Stacy and Dr. Foote, it's wonderful to have you both here. And our community is very fortunate to have you both and so many others uh, part of uh, this community and what we do because we, uh, you have such wonderful knowledge. You're helping all of us. And I'm pleased you're here. Thank you. And Thank you. now you were both at the center, the UF Center for Movement Disorders and Newer Restoration, and that's where you're uh, in charge of clinical trials. So Stacy, tell me a little more about your involvement with Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease has been a particular passion of mine. I went to school to get a degree in gerontology because quality of life for aging adults was something I wanted to delve into. Alzheimer's being a, a, a great epidemic at this time seemed to be a natural foray. I did work at the Alzheimer's Association where I learned quite a bit and helped educate the community. And I um, somehow forayed my career into the Movement Disorder Center for neuro restoration, and we are lucky enough to be involved in a new, as you said, groundbreaking study on Alzheimer's yes. using DBS surgery, which stands for deep brain stimulation. So this is, it's, it's very exciting. And tell me a little more about the center. For instance, how long have you been with the center and uh, um, how does all that, you're part of the Brain Institute, and right. then tell me more about the center, what goes on. So the, the center, um, it, as, you, as you said, the University of Florida Center for Movement Disorders and Neurorestoration uh, was started as the Center for Movement Disorders about a decade ago. Okay. Um, Michael Oaken, my neurologist partner, and right. I uh, came from Emory University and joined the faculty here uh, with uh, the task to start this center and to start a program specifically to do deep brain stimulation surgery, which was at the time a, a relatively new intervention for treating Parkinson's disease and tremors. Right. And now, the, the now, um, well, so much has happened in these 10 years. Um, for instance, about how many surgeries have you done in this time frame uh, for DBS? We have now done about 850 deep brain stimulator implantations. Wow. Uh, over a 10-year period. Yes. Uh, so it is offering hope to a lot of individuals. And now this clinical trial is offering hope for Alzheimer's patients. And it's something pretty revolutionary. Yes. So uh, back to Alzheimer's though, Stacy, kind of share some statistics with us. Okay. Scare me a little bit more. Okay. So approximately 5.4 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And that's a, that's a large quantity and it's growing rather rapidly. And the, um, the local government all the way up to the federal government has been trying to uh, take it under their wings and really see that it's an epidemic um, financially, it's going to be devastating and what they can do to help. Um, from the research side, people are trying to look into pharmaceutical drugs or whatever right. they can to help stave off the symptoms, halt it or even find a cure. What do you think about pharmaceutical drugs? Are they effective? They are effective for some people some of the time, so it's not a long-term effective treatment. Okay. So we, we're looking for something more long-term, and this might be what it's might going to be. be. Might be something that uh, is that answer. 
And Dr. Foote, um, tell me more about this trial. Now, UF is one of several sites in the country that is part of this clinical trial. What does this trial really mean? What are we doing here? Uh, well, w we feel pretty privileged to have been selected. There are only a handful of uh, centers in the United States that are participating. Um, and you know, we assume that it's because, as we mentioned, we've done hundreds of deep brain stimulation operations. But also, yes. um, Dr. Oaken and I have done a lot of research uh, exploring novel applications of deep brain stimulation. So it was sort of a natural thing for us to do. Yes, I can see. I understand. And there is a wonderful a story about how this whole clinical trial got started. Will you share that, please? Right. Um, I was telling you that one of my colleagues, Professor Lozano in Toronto, Canada, uh, was investigating a novel application of deep brain stimulation. He was actually uh, trying to treat morbid obesity with deep brain stimulation. and. Uh, he was stimulating the brain of, a, of an obese patient in uh, part of the brain called the hypothalamus. And when uh, stimulation was applied during the operation, the patient who was awake had these intense deja vu experiences, mm -hmm. episodic memories from his past that would uh, become more vivid as they would turn the stimulation up and then go away when they turned it off. So there was clearly some action on the memory circuitry. Right, a link uh, there. Yeah. And then suddenly that has led, now, and that also led to your interest into thinking there could be something that exactly. was promising about this clinical Exactly. Trial. For years, people have been asking me, uh, do you think uh, deep brain stimulation is going to have any role to play in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, including my mother, who's caring for her mother who has Alzheimer's disease. Right. And my answer has always been, sadly, no, uh, because Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative process that breaks down the network, right. uh, uh, the memory network in the brain. And for deep brain stimulation to work, the network has to be intact. Has to the be wires there. have to be connected. So uh, in this case, uh, it's, it's using deep brain stimulation in a different way that we can talk about a little bit so more. So the answer is changing and That's that right. provides the hope. And we'll take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. with Dr. Kelly Foote and Stacy Merritt. And Dr. Foote, tell us more about deep brain stimulation and why you now think that it's showing promise for the treatment of Alzheimer's. Because you said first no, even to your mom. Right. <laughs> okay, what has changed? Right, what, what has changed is the way we think about Alzheimer's disease. I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. Uh, deep, deep brain stimulation, uh, or, or DBS as we call it, right. uh, is exactly what it sounds like, S delivering electrical stimulation deep into the brain. Um, we implant uh, an electrode in the brain and we implant a pulse generator which looks very much like a conventional cardiac pacemaker okay. in the chest, but instead of running the wires in and pacing the heart with it, uh, we run the wires under the skin, under the scalp, and into the brain uh, and it delivers pulses of electricity to a very precisely selected target in the brain to affect some circuit, some functional circuit in the brain. Okay. So for the first time, what you're saying is this could, this could work. Right. So this prior to this yes. recent research, uh, I always assumed, like I think virtually all researchers in Alzheimer's disease, that Alzheimer's disease was a degenerative disorder, uh, either deposition of you know this this bad protein in the brain right, that's, that's messing that. up the network and resulting in deterioration of these networks and uh, the, my problem with uh, deep brain stimulation and Alzheimer's was for deep brain stimulation to be effective it's a network based treatment you have the wires something. have to be connected right so uh, this uh, experience that Professor Lozano had with in, with inciting memory through stimulation well it turns out the fornix. Uh, is part of the most important memory circuit in the brain uh, and it's it's the biggest bundle of wires in that circuit okay. and it just so happens to be directly behind 
the hypothalamus that he was stimulating. So he was inadvertently, stim inadvertently stimulating the fornix to, to activate that memory circuitry. Well, that led to a bunch of studies to investigate the, the potential of that. Um, he studied rodents and yes. he stimulated the memory circuitry in rodents to see if it would have a beneficial effect, and, and it did. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, you, you know, you, you can do memory tests on rodents. You, you, you get a, a little rodent swimming pool and right. you put an invisible platform so they, they swim around until they find it, and then you put them back in there later and see if they remember where it was, and if they swim right to it, their memory's good. If they don't, they're not. So, right. so these rodents who were stimulated did better on those memory right, tests. Right, they were finding that. And what's even more exciting is when they studied the brains of these rodents, there was neurogenesis. There were new neurons that appeared to be a result right. of the stimulation. Almost regrowing. Right. Growing new neurons, new brain cells, uh, which, you know, if you know anything about Alzheimer's disease, the big problem is atrophy. Right. It, like, shrinks. The it shrinks. Yes. Right. You lose brain cells. And in this case, to see new brain cells is completely the opposite, the opposite. of what you expect. Right. So that's really exciting. So uh, these studies, and, and there were several of them that were compelling, led to a human trial. So Professor Lozano and his team did uh, this operation that we're proposing, uh, right. stimulation of the fornix on six patients, and among those patients, uh, he studied, you know, of course, you know, you test their memory before and after, after and see if it has a beneficial effect, and it did in several of the patients. Uh, but also, there are some other things that we know happen to people with Alzheimer's disease, like um, certain parts of the brain become hypoactive, less active, the temporal lobes and the posterior part of the cingulate gyrus. Um, when we study them with, you know, we watch how much sugar they're using up on a, what's called a PET scan, and oh, those okay. areas are hypoactive. And as, as Alzheimer's progresses, they become even more hypoactive. And so that's something that. you can follow and you can see it deteriorate. Right. Well, in these patients, uh, these six patients, a year after, uh, after they'd been stimulated for a year, those areas, instead of becoming less active, actually became more active. And there was also evidence of neurogenesis. So it's, it's very so exciting. So all of that, all that led to the clinical trials and saying, this could work, this could happen. That's right. We want to we wanna try it out. And, and here we are at UF with that opportunity. And who would be eligible, Stacy, for the trial? The ideal candidate to speak with us or come in for a screening visit is someone who's recently been diagnosed with mild Alzheimer's disease. One of the other major criteria is he or she would have to be on an FDA-approved drug for Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And what age We're is looking there? at the age range from 55 to 80. Okay. All right. Important things to be considering. We're going to take another quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back talking about the clinical trial for the treatment of Alzheimer's taking place at the University of Florida. And Stacy, as Assistant Director of Clinical Trials, I'm uh, bringing my mom to you. I'm concerned about her. We're interested in undergoing the trial. So I call you up and how do I get started? Tell me, walk me through this. All right, sure. So we make an appointment and I'm the clinical coordinator in charge of this study. So I'll be Great. with, if you and your mother sign up or enroll, I'll be with you from the beginning until the end. All and right, you hold my hand through all of this Absolutely, and absolutely. And so what's really important is to explain the entire process and what the trial entails. So we have something called a informed consent, and we're going to read over it line by line thoroughly because we want you to understand the risks versus the benefits and what's involved in the study. Agreed. And, and anybody who's in this study has to have their spouse, caregiver, whoever's Absolutely. with them. Absolutely. Somebody has to come not only the first time, but to each visit, and this individual must sign on the line as a consent also. So okay. there's two consenting adults. All right. So when I talk about the risks and the benefits, one of the things that is very, very important to make sure people clearly understand is that it's a prospective, randomized, double-blind trial. Okay, explain this. <laughs> okay, so what that means is all parties involved who are giving care to the patient or assessing the patient or administering any type of 
cognitive exams or physical exams, et cetera, will not know which arm, so to speak, the individual is in. And when I say which arm, there would be the control group and there would be a group, and this is basically for any study, the group who receives the treatment. And, Ooh, okay. and now in a lot of studies, the control group never receives the treatment. This could be a five-year study and there's always the control on the subject. Okay. This one is a little bit different. Once the individual signs the consents and all of the tests go through and he or she is in, in the study without any issues or complications, the implantation happens. Okay, that's the and that's yeah. Dr. Fritz. Got that. And yes, I will Dr. also there. attend okay. attend the implantation and you know and see if I can make he or she feel more comfortable. Afterwards, he or she comes back in about two weeks or so and they go through the randomization process. Okay, now they flip meaning a coin. they flip a coin and you might get activated and you might not. Exactly. So it's a one to one ratio. So half of the folks in the study will have their device activated immediately and the other half will have to wait one year until they're receiving okay. any type of stimulation. But then you don't know. The patient doesn't know, evaluator, doctor, nobody knows who's activated, who's not. That's why they call it double blind. Okay. One blind is one. the patient. The patient doesn't know if he's on or off. And the other, and the other, one? other blind is that everybody evaluating the patient doesn't okay. know either. Okay. Well, I don't know if I feel so good about this. A, a year why. seems like a long time. Yes, it does. Well, it's, it's especially important because we want to have valid data at the end of the, s of the clinical trial. And if we don't have a control group who's not receiving the, uh, electro the stimulation, then we can't really see if it was efficacious at the end. So this is a very important part of it. However, at one year is not really that long of a time. Everybody will have their device turned on. Okay, so after one year, if you haven't had your device activated, it will be so after that 12-month period. Okay. Yes. So everybody still gets the benefit of the DBS and the stimulation. And exactly. And what, what we're hoping is that every patient involved in this study gets substantial benefit from the stimulation. Of course, we don't know because it's, a, it's an investigational right. trial. Um, but that year that seems so long I is really necessary. It's the only way that we're going to have a reasonable comparison because Alzheimer's disease is generally slowly progressive. So to we see a significant time. difference, we need that amount of time. So that's why the, okay. the wait is a year right for away. half the folks. And in that time, my mother and I come back, we have different appointments, we're assessed, and, and different, you know, yeah, studies and tests Yeah, your mother tests would be given. assessed regardless if she's turned on or not, which mm -hmm. she won't know and we won't know. She will come in regularly because we want to monitor the safety of the device. Even if it's not um, turned on, the device has still been implanted. And so part of this so is a safety idea. study, so we want to make sure that everything is going well and we keep an eye, we monitor the patients through the entire year. So um, regular visits will occur in that time okay. frame. Now I've got some perspective. And still we have another break, but we'll have more to cover. And we'll be right back. back talking with Dr. Kelly Foote and Stacy Merritt. And Stacy convinced me, why should I sign my mother up for this clinical trial? This clinical trial provides hope in an arena where there really isn't any promising intervention in place at this particular time. All right, so this is really one of the hopes and we're fortunate it's taking place here. Share some more statistics with us. Okay, once you turn 65 years old, there is a 15% chance you will get Alzheimer's disease. When you turn 80 years old, there is a 50% chance. Okay, this scares me. I mean, we are working hard to be healthy, exercise, eat right, and now we have to worry about Alzheimer's also. And it is scary, we wanna age, we wanna stay, we want longevity, but then there's this. Right, so you can see the population's aging, and this is a problem that affects uh, a Everybody, lot of people yes. as they age. And not just the person who has Alzheimer's, the caregiver, the spouse, the family, the loved one. It's just a huge ripple effect, which you very well know, Stacy. Yes. And it affects families very much. Um, so I'm excited with this word, hope. Now, you've signed several people up for the trial, but one person has already 
had the uh, DBS implantation, right. right? A couple of weeks ago, we implanted the first uh, deep brain stimulation device uh, here at the University of Florida for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, a woman in her late 60s, uh, who is a wonderful lady, uh, trailblazer. Right. You know, and, and you know, I think these folks are courageous. I do too. And yeah. you know, if you think about it, what they are doing is, is potentially helping everyone who comes after. Exactly. If this works, which, you know, we're cautiously optimistic. This um, will change everything. Yeah, it could change the whole ball game with Alzheimer's. So we're really excited. Yes, and I, now, how long an operation is that? You've talked about being courageous. Uh, well, the way we have this operation set up, according to the study protocol, it's a fairly long one. Right. But the part where the patient's awake is, is relatively short. Uh, that part lasts about an hour and a half to two hours and then the patient goes to sleep while I implant the pulse okay. generator and the wire, hook up all the wires and okay. all that business. All right. Well, I'm already in awe of the, this woman who has stepped forward. But Stacy, um, I, I know that you're hoping others will answer the call for just the very reason you said, to be a trailblazer, to help themselves and to others. What would you like to add to encourage people? I hope that if they, if they even think they know somebody who might be a good candidate for the study, don't hesitate to call me, and I will be happy to explain any of the details. Right. I mean, as we said, you're with the person every step of the way. <laughs> they can call you 24-7 right. with any concerns, and I'm sure there are many concerns and questions people yes, will have. Yes, there are. But once again, I think we are very fortunate in this community to have the Center for Movement Disorders, to have this clinical trial taking place here, to offer this hope for people in North Central Florida. Um, because as you said, Dr. Foote, it's, it's a good option. Yeah. It could and change everything. And we are fortunate to have it here. You know, I, yes. you mentioned the center, and I, I should give a shout out to the people at the center. Uh, because it's a big team of people that make this possible. Exactly. And if it wasn't honestly one of the world's leading centers for this sort of thing and all of those people contributing to that then we wouldn't, wouldn't have been, been selected to do this. That so, says it all. Yeah. I thank both of you and all of them for making this uh, valuable knowledge available to all of us. Thank you again. And I'm glad you tuned in. I hope you'll join us next week. Take care.